Have you ever wondered how planets are formed and what makes them so different from each other? How did Earth get its water, and why is it so rare in the universe? These are some of the big questions that astronomers and astrobiologists are trying to answer by studying the birthplaces of planets, the protoplanetary disks. Protoplanetary disks are swirling clouds of gas and dust that surround young stars and provide the material for planet formation. They are also the most mysterious and elusive objects in the cosmos, as they are hidden from our view by the glare of their host stars and the dust in their outer regions. But thanks to the power of NASA's Webb Space Telescope, we can now peer into these disks and uncover their secrets. In this video, we will explain the new discovery made by Webb's MIRI instrument that supports a long-proposed theory of how planets are formed and how it is challenging our current theories. We will also discuss the implications and significance of this discovery for our understanding of planet formation and diversity. So if you are interested in learning more about these topics, then stay tuned and watch this video till the end. The first topic we will talk about is the snowline drift theory, which is the long proposed theory of how planets are formed from icy pebbles that originate in the cold, outer regions of protoplanetary disks. The snowline drift theory is based on the idea that the temperature and pressure in protoplanetary disks vary with distance from the star. The closer you are to the star, the hotter and denser the disk is, and the farther you are, the colder and thinner the disk is. This means that different types of materials can exist in different regions of the disk, depending on their melting or sublimation points. One of the most important materials in protoplanetary disks is water, which is essential for life as we know it. Water can exist in three states, solid, liquid, and gas. In the cold, outer regions of the disk, water is frozen into ice, and it can stick to dust grains and form larger aggregates called pebbles. These pebbles are the building blocks of planets, as they can grow by colliding and sticking together or by accreting gas from the disk. The theory predicts that these icy pebbles should drift inward toward the star due to friction in the gaseous disk, delivering both solids and water to the inner regions where rocky planets can form. This process is similar to how comets are thought to have brought water to Earth and other planets in our solar system. However, there is a catch. As the icy pebbles cross the snow line, the boundary where the temperature is high enough for ice to sublimate into vapor, they should release large amounts of cold water vapor into the disk. This water vapor should have a distinctive signature that can be detected by infrared instruments. The snow line drift theory is a very elegant and plausible model of how planets are formed, but it has one problem. It has never been observed before, until now. Webb's MIRI instrument is the Mid-Infrared Instrument, and it is one of the four scientific instruments on board the Webb Space Telescope. Actually, MIRI is the perfect tool to study protoplanetary disks, as it can see through the dust that obscures them and reveal their hidden features. It can also detect the water vapor that is released by the icy pebbles as they cross the snow line, as water vapor has a strong infrared emission at a wavelength of 17.2 microns. Using MIRI, astronomers observed four protoplanetary disks around Sun-like stars, which are located between 370 and 400 light-years away from Earth. The four disks are PDS-70, HD 163296, HD 169142, and HD 100546, and they have different characteristics, such as their size, shape, and the presence of gaps and rings that indicate the formation of large planets. To their surprise and delight, the astronomers detected the signature of water vapor in all four disks, which is the first direct evidence of the snow line drift theory. They also found that the compact disks had more water vapor in their inner regions than the extended disks, which supports the idea that the icy pebbles drift more efficiently in the compact disks and deliver more water and solids to the rocky planets. This discovery is a major breakthrough for our understanding of planet formation, as it confirms a long-proposed theory and reveals how Webb's infrared instruments can probe the chemistry and structure of protoplanetary disks and the origins of planets.
The structure and chemistry of protoplanetary disks are determined by many factors, such as the mass and luminosity of the star, the initial composition and distribution of the gas and dust, the turbulence and viscosity of the disk, the magnetic fields and radiation from the star, and the gravitational interactions among the disk and the planets. These factors can influence the temperature and pressure profiles of the disk, the size and shape of the disk, the formation and migration of planets, the delivery and retention of water and other volatiles, and the habitability and diversity of the planets. One of the most interesting findings of the Webb's MIRI observation is that the compact and extended disks have different amounts of water vapor in their inner regions, which implies that they have different histories and outcomes of planet formation. The compact disks are smaller and denser than the extended disks, and they have no gaps or rings that indicate the presence of large planets. This suggests that the compact disks are younger and less evolved than the extended disks, and that they have not yet formed any large planets that could disrupt the disk or create pressure traps. The compact disks also have more water vapor in their inner regions than the extended disks, which implies that they have more icy pebbles that drift inward and deliver more water and solids to the rocky planets. This could mean that the compact disks are more efficient at forming water-rich rocky planets which could be more favorable for life. The extended disks, on the other hand, are larger and thinner than the compact disks, and they have gaps and rings that indicate the presence of large planets. This suggests that the extended disks are older and more evolved than the compact disks, and that they have already formed some large planets that could affect the disk and the pebble drift. They also have less water vapor in their inner regions than the compact disks, which implies that they have fewer icy pebbles that drift inward and deliver less water and solids to the rocky planets. This could mean that the extended disks are less efficient at forming water-rich rocky planets, which could be less favorable for life. However, this does not mean that the extended disks are barren or boring. The extended disks may have other sources of water and volatiles, such as comets, asteroids, or moons, that could enrich the planets or create oceans or atmospheres. They may also have more diversity and complexity in their planetary systems, as the large planets could create resonances, perturbations, or migrations that could affect the orbits and properties of the smaller planets. These are some of the possible implications and significance of the discovery made by Webb's MIRI instrument, but they are not the final word. There are still many uncertainties and limitations in the study, such as the possible effects of dust opacity, disk geometry, or stellar variability on the water vapor detection. There are also many questions and directions for further research and observation, such as how the water vapor evolves over time, how the pebble drift affects other elements or molecules, or how the snowline drift theory applies to other types of stars or disks. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and interesting. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we will try to answer them. Thank you for watching and see you next time.